is the yellow rock orchid. Common name for this. This is another one you've grown, Earl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this lithophyte grows along the temperate southeast coast of Australia from sea level to 3,300 feet. It grows on exposed rocks and may form huge mats. The upright or pendulous leaves are slender, terete, fleshy, and grooved. They grow to four and three quarters of an inch long. They are usually numerous inflorescences bearing one or two fragrant flowers each about one inch in diameter. Really interesting species. But my favorite is Dacrylia teretifolia. Uh, common name for this is the bridal veil orchid or the pencil orchid. Um, these are long pendulous terete leaves that, that look like a long pencil hanging down. Um, species grows along the east coast of Australia where it is common in lowlands where the light is bright and intense. The plant is an epiphyte or lithophyte. It forms large pendulous clumps up to 10 feet long and puts on an ex a tremendous show when in full bloom. The leaves are up to 2 feet long, terete, and not grooved. The inflorescence carries up to 15 spidery looking flowers that open widely, up to 1.5 inches across. These are strongly fragrant and appear from winter to spring. Now, these so far have been dendrobium type plants. Uh, plants that are true dendrobiums are that were once in the genus. Now, Sarcocallus are totally different. This is a true Australian orchid. Um, this Sarcocallus hartmannii is our first one. Now, this species is restricted to a small area near the Queensland-New South Wales border in eastern Australia. It grows in the hummus of rock crevices and cliffs in both exposed situations and sheltered places at altitudes of 660 to 3,000 feet. The erect branch stems form small clumps and are up to 6 inches long. The curved leaves are about 6 inches long and 2 thirds of an inch wide. The arching inflorescence can have up to 25 flowers, each about one and one quarter inch across. The flowers vary in shape and color. They appear during spring. This species requires bright light and good air movement. Does anyone grow sarcocallus? I've killed some. You've killed some? Okay. Well, I've never seen one. I've never seen one for sale at a show or anywhere uh, around. New Zealand World Orchid Con Conference. Uh, we went to Australia afterwards. They had a, a species conference in Australia, and there were a lot of those there. And I really fell in love with them. And I bought some. They're very popular with Australian orchidists yes. uh, for good reason. The they they grow the there. Red in the summer. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. Yeah, beautiful little plants. And the hybrids are very diversified, all kinds of colors. Yes, they have been um, they have been hybridized with Phalaenopsis. Um, well, I'm talking about just among, the, and just among the Sarcocallus. Oh, just among the Sarcocallus. Mm -hmm. But they have been uh, cross-hybridized with other genus that that might make these a little bit easier for us to grow, but I haven't seen any of those available. All right, Sarcocallus falcatus, the orange blossom orchid. There it is. This species occurs along the eastern coast of Australia from Victoria to North Queensland. It often grows on the outer twigs of canopies or on mossy branches in misty forests at altitudes of 600 to 4,000 feet. It's a miniature plant with a short stem and a few curved leaves up to six inches long. The inflorescences are semi-pendulous with up to 12 flowers, each up to one and a half inches across. The fragrance resembles orange blossoms and the flowers appear during spring. This plant should be given good air movement, no direct sunlight, and moist, humid, 
cool to intermediate conditions. You hear that, Earl? You can grow these. I know <laughs> yeah, you can. That, that would grow in the cool house. I bet Andy's got some. Huh? I bet Andy's got some. <laughs> All right. Sarcocallus herticalcar. The harlequin orchid. This miniature species is restricted to a small area in eastern Cape York Peninsula. It is a small semipendulous plant that grows on small trees along creek banks at low altitudes where there are dry winters and wet summers. The stems are up to one and one quarter inches long with a few curved thin leaves up to four inches long. The inflorescence is up to one and a quarter inches long with up to eight flowers though they don't all open at one time. The flowers are about one half inch across and appear from late spring to early summer. This plant grows best on a slab in a semi-shaded position with regular water. All right. That's all our epiphytes we're going to talk about. Now we're going to talk about some terrestrial orchids. Now like I say, some of these are near impossible for us to grow, but some are very amenable to culture here. Um, I'm going to tell you about each one. We're going to start with some Terrastylus, a genus of about 150 relatively easy to grow Australian species, commonly called green hoods. This is Terrastylus curta, a widespread species that occurs from the eastern coast to Tasmania and across much of southern Australia. It forms colonies and has a rosette of leaves, each of which is about four inches long. The flower stem is about one foot tall and bears a single flower about one and three quarters of an inch long. Flowering is from late winter to spring. That's how terrastylus are really pretty when you see a colony of them growing again. In late winter One and spring in the plant. northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere? That's going to be in the southern hemisphere. That's going to be in the wild in Australia okay. where this plant grows. Here, if it wants to shoot up a bloom spike, let it. You know, don't cut it off for sure. <laughs> uh, Terrastylus baptistii is a very easy to grow species. It is distributed in eastern Australia from Queensland through New South Wales to Victoria. It often forms large dense colonies and has the largest flower of any species in the genus. The three and a quarter inch leaves form a basal rosette. The flower stem is up to 16 inches and bears a single flower about two and a half inches long. The species may flower in autumn or in spring. That's a pretty good sized bloom. I didn't realize, again, until reading this, that those are. I just ordered some terrastylus. Good for you. I, for I, I to knew that in. you told me that you had possibly had a source farm. Are, are they Carta or. Carta, and, and I think Baptistii That's also. Uh, Very good. There are sources, but. You have to order during a certain time of the year, and, and I've been trying to order them for the last couple of years, but I always hit it at the wrong time and they right. can't ship them. Right. So this time I hit it up right on. Well, they say that they're very easy to grow. The majority the of these grow plants, out? what's that? No elevation they grow? Um, I, I'm pretty sure that these are, are lowland. Um, well, mine are coming from California. Okay, okay. Uh, there's a judge at the Atlanta Center that grows them grows a lot of the species of them and you know so I know they can be grown in this area. Right. Oh, well, um, you might do better with it out of doors at least most of the season. Mm -hmm. um, these are from zone 8-9 just like what we are so I, I think they'd be very amenable and just a standard terrestrial mix. They say that they are just really easy to grow. Good for you. Maybe I'll get some of that. Eventually. <laughs> Would you put those out there with your native, Mississippi native section? Uh, yeah. yeah. But I'd, I'd, I'd check on how much light they More shade though. I right. may, I'd probably wouldn't put them out with my full sun 
native species, but I've, I've got some that are growing in the shade. Bet they're highly variable. I really bet they could adjust to that. Did I miss one? 